there are several kinds of racing games out there. You got your Forzas, you, your Need for Speeds, and your Garfield cards. Hard to top that last one. It can almost be kind of overwhelming deciding what to play considering that many of these games control differently or have unique elements to them. Among those racing games is Horizon Chase Turbo, which takes heavy inspiration from racing games made in the 90s. While it was originally released on mobile devices as Horizon Chase World Tour, it eventually got an enhanced version on modern systems including the PlayStation Vita and with a physical release in 2021 when the system was discontinued in 2019. That's strange, but okay. There were also three DLC packs released over the course of the game's lifetime, and those deserve a look as well. I had a lot of fun with this game and think it deserves your attention. Let's begin. The gameplay loop of Turbo is easy to understand. You make turns around a variety of different tracks, attempting to take over your opponents, and not crash in comical fashion. The controls are amazing and don't feel sluggish. Whenever I fail to complete a turn without crashing, it feels like my fault as I didn't accurately guess when I should have turned. If you feel that you started turning too late, you can also break to go easier on curves. While I didn't use the break option in the beginning, I definitely found myself relying on it more as the campaign went on. Speaking of the campaign, in the main campaign, World Tour, you'll find yourself traveling around the globe, racing to be the number one. Each track has different things you can collect. Nitro is what allows you to boost and can sometimes be found on the track. When racing, you must also grab fuel because, while you could get away without grabbing it for shorter tracks, as you progress, you'll likely find yourself seeing this low fuel warning pop up. If you don't get more fuel, your car will begin to stop, therefore making it an automatic loss. It's not a huge challenge because I could honestly count on my fingers how many times I lost due to a lack of fuel. Oh. There are also tokens, which affect the coins you get at the end of a race. That's another thing. Your performance in a race will also determine how many coins you get, which are used to unlock different tracks and upgrades, so you better try your best. You better. Oh, there's my fingers. As you progress, you'll also unlock different cars that all have unique stats, so feel free to experiment so you can get a feel for which is your favorite. My favorite by the end was the Deja Vu, but I feel like I've just seen this car before. Guess you could say it's Deja Vu. This is the part where you laugh. Many of the tracks throughout the game also have different weather conditions. One of those conditions is thunderstorms, where not only is it hard to see, but you also have to worry about the rain, making it more difficult to control your car. It definitely keeps things feeling fresh, and helps tracks not blend in together. The campaign isn't the only thing to do. There are adventures, tournaments, and endurance. Adventures lets you unlock new car skins. Tournaments are like the Grand Prix mode. You play through four races and whoever gets the most points by the end wins. Endurance lets you select how many races you want to do, and you need to get a high enough position to keep going. With each race, you unlock a new upgrade. This is a great idea, as you must decide what to prioritize. Do you want more speed? Or maybe you want more fuel? The choice is yours. This is only the single player content, as while I experience this magnificent game alone, we can get up to 4 other people involved. I know this is probably a given considering many other racers have this option, but if multiplayer is something you are looking for, you'll find it here. That covers all the content within the base game. Before I jump into the DLC, I just want to briefly mention the graphics and sound. Turbo's art style feels like it takes the sprites of older racing games and converts them into 3D models. The environment has a low poly look to it, and blending that with the nicely drawn 2D backgrounds, you got yourself a lovely looking game. I also love the look of the cars. They remind me of those cars that you can buy, put together, then paint. The UI is sleek and makes it easy for you to quickly select a track, car, and start playing. I also never navigated it and thought, this feels like the menu of a mobile game. As for the music, it gets you pumped up while racing and makes you want to win. It was composed by Barry Leach, who also worked on a Super Nintendo game titled Top Gear. Looking at screenshots alone, the inspiration for Turbo is made even more clear. The sound effects are stellar, from the usage of Nitro to selecting menu options. They're nice to hear. With that said, I think it's time to redirect ourselves back to the DLC. There are three DLC packs. They each provide a new campaign and cars. The first DLC was Summer Vibes. You get 12 maps redesigned with a new layout and look to suit a more summer aesthetic, but the main draw is the convertible. Come on, admit it. It does look cool. For $2, it's a pretty harmless DLC. The second DLC was the Rookie Series. Are you having trouble with the campaign and wish you could get some practice in an easier environment? If so, this DLC is for you. It's a compressed version of the World Tour, but with a few rule changes. There is no fuel management, and there are no tokens. You simply have to focus on winning. 
I don't really have a problem with the game's difficulty, so I'm not the DLC's target demographic, but if you are having trouble, this will help you improve. It's free, so you might as well pick it up. The third and final DLC is Senna Forever. This one is interesting as it revolves around Ayrton Senna, an F1 race driver who's considered one of the best to have ever lived. There is a career mode and world championship mode. In career mode, we play through Senna's journey to becoming a well-known champion. World championship mode lets you race for different teams. There are new tracks, new cars, and a new first person mode. Before each race, rather than selecting a vehicle, you select a race strategy. One strategy may be good for straightaways, but another may be good for rain. You select it based on the track layout and weather. For $6, I would say it's worth the money, even if you aren't familiar with Senna. I believe I covered everything I wish to cover with this game. Seriously, if you love arcade-style racing games, you should pick this one up. It goes on sale pretty often, with the lowest price being $3.99, so it's only a minor hit to your wallet. The developers, Aquarius Game Studios, also released Horizon Chase 2 on Apple Arcade and are looking to release the game on other platforms sometime in 2023, so I'm going to be on the lookout for that. This is Adam, signing off. Peace.